I purchased Things 3 recently, and I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it. Things is a task management tool similar to Reminders or Todoist, and there's a handful of others on the market. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into the four things that I absolutely love about Things 3 and the four things that I don't really enjoy all that much. So let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Chris, and on this channel, we talk about all things finance, technology, and productivity. So if you like what you see, feel free to give the video a like, comment, and a subscribe for more content similar to this. So let's get into my four favorite features about Things 3. Number one is the UI. This app is beautiful. Everything from the navigation on the left to the way how you can structure your tasks and headings, it is beautiful. Now this tool only works on Apple devices. It works on iPhones, iPads, and Macs. And the thing is this app really feels like it is an Apple product. It's intuitive, it's easy to use, and it looks and feels great across all of the platforms. They've really gone the extra mile to make this app feel great and user friendly. Now, I personally think that Things 3 actually has the cleanest layout of any of the other to-do apps. I'm talking Tick Tick and Todoist and Reminders. I think that Things 3 is actually the most beautiful looking tool if that's important to you. One of my all time favorite features in Things 3 is the ability to use keyboard shortcuts. If you're a keyboard junkie, you are going to love this. So let's take a look at a few of them. So here I am, I'm in my home projects. You can see I've got kitchen projects, I've got family room projects, but I wanna use some keyboard shortcuts to add some new tasks and headlines here. So Command Shift N will get you a new heading. We'll call this bathroom projects and command N will create tasks under it. So let's say the quick and easy thing here though, is the ability to use keyboard shortcuts to assign dates and times and reminders for tasks. So let's take a look at that. If I do a simple command T, it marks it as today. You'll see that that's actually in our now there. And you will see that it's also in my widget here on my Mac. You can also use Command S to get in and get more granular. This is where there's a little bit of natural language technology here. So this is where I can say Thursday at 3 p.m. or on December 15th. So on this particular task, I'm going to say December 15th, 3 p.m., done. You've also got the ability to kind of navigate and maneuver tasks using keyboard shortcuts. So with Command up and down, you can see that I can move this up and down between headlines and I can use the command and slash to hide the sidebar, which makes a really kind of clean, easy layout for tasks that you are currently working on. The third thing I really love about Things 3 is the widgets. It's easy to add them to your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, and they're interactive so you can easily toggle tasks on and off without even having to open the app. It's as simple as finding it here on your home screen and clicking the little check mark. You are all good to go. Well, my fourth favorite feature about Things 3 is the visual aspect of being able to see your progress on all of your different projects. I feel like none of the other tools have something similar to this. So if we go here, take a look, I've got this YouTube video project and I'm gonna hit a million views on this video, I already know that. Um, but here, if we look, I've got pre-production, in progress, publish. As I check tasks off, you'll see that this kind of progress bar shows that I'm now partially completed with this actual task. That even extends over here in the, the navigation here. You can see that that retains there. There's something about just being able to see the progress of how far along you are in your individual tasks and projects that I really, really enjoy about Things 3. Now, as great as Things 3 is, I have been struggling with quite a few features. None of them are deal breakers, but they are a little bit problematic for my workflow. So one of the first things is the natural language use. It's a little bit trickier in Things 3. If I pull up reminders here, I love the fact that I can just simply put task and literally type today and it's right there. Or I could type tomorrow at 3 p.m. and it does it. It's super simple and it's super easy. In Things, it's just not that simple and it actually requires a lot more clicks. If I go in here to create a new project and I say task, uh, if I type tomorrow or I type at 3 p.m., that's not actually gonna do anything. I'm gonna have to click Command S first to open that. And then I can do tomorrow at 3 p.m. It'll get me there, but it's still just another extra step that seems kind of unnecessary. 
The second feature in things that is really painful is recurring tasks. In most task managers, you create a normal task and then you set it to be a reoccurring task, whether that's weekly, monthly, or yearly. In things three, that is not the case. So here I'm in Apple Reminders. I'm going to create my repeating task. And if you go into the information here, you can do remind me on a day and you can easily make it repeat by simply clicking here, daily, weekly, and I've got a full in-depth video on how you can do that with Apple Reminders. But if you wanna do that in Todoist, there's no way to do it to a standard task. So I've created a new standard task. The thing is there's no way to make it repeat by default in here. What you actually have to do is go into file and click a new repeating to do. You kind of get this not great UI where you then have to decide and add reminders and add deadlines and choose daily and weekly. It's all just a big old mess. It works, but it's just far from ideal. The third feature that I struggle with in Things 3 is background syncing. Now, what does that mean? That means if you use Things across multiple different devices, it's not going to sync the projects that you moved or the tasks you've added or the due dates until you open the app. That's really problematic if you're gonna use widgets. Let me show you. So here you can see I have draft script as marked as due today, and you can see it in my widget here for Mac OS. Now, if I go ahead and toggle this off as completed, it disappears from both. But now if I pull up my iPhone, I've got the things three widget here up top. You'll see that draft script is still there. It's not checked off. That is not going to be checked off until I go into the things three app and it allows itself to update. So if I click here and I open this up, it now removes itself and it's now no longer in the widget. But the fact that it doesn't sync automatically is kind of a problem for me. The fourth and final thing about Things 3 that's a little bit challenging for me is the fact that it is a complete walled garden. It's very hard to get information in and out and sync it with other tools. There's some workarounds using app shortcuts and some things like that. But in general, you can't get the information out or synced or integrated with other tools. For me, this is a little bit of a problem because I enjoy seeing my tasks and my to-do list on my calendar. That's why I use Apple Reminders and Fantastical. I've already got a video on that, but it's a great way to see your tasks and their due dates already on your calendar. You can do that with other apps. TickTick and Todoist all have features that will allow you to do that but you can't do it in Things 3. And for me, that's a big problem. So if you do download Things 3 or you've been a power user, let me know in the comments what you love about it and what you don't. I would love to chat with you. So thanks again for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.